Welcome to my talk on Helm. Um, I'm Reinhardt. Uh, I work for Codecentric. I'm a German IT consultancy, probably the greatest IT consulting employer in Germany. So if you're interested, talk to me afterwards. Um, so my topic is Helm, Helm Charts. I'm a maintainer on the Helm Charts project um, and also contribute to Helm every now and then. So, um, and I would kind of introduce you to Helm today and show you what it does, what it is, and why it's good to use it. Um, let me do a quick poll up front. Who's uh, using Kubernetes? All right. Like 30%. So who's using Helm already? A few of you. OK. <coughs> Anyone who has contributed to Helm or Helm charts? No. All right. So <coughs> Helm, what is it? It's the package manager for Kubernetes. Um, like compare it to like apt or yum or something like this. So, but actually, it's it's really more than just a package manager, which we will see uh, when we look at, at what it what it does and, and, and all the features. Um, <coughs> Helm itself was originally de developed by Deis, which was acquired by by Microsoft, and uh, they are still really uh, contributing active. So the original core maintainers are now part of the Azure team. And there's a few other maintainers from, from various other companies. So and it's really a very active project and um, with regular new, new versions. And it's, it's uh, really actively maintained. And it's a, a great tool, tool to use. Um, <coughs> so before we look at the features and what it does, let's just have a, a quick look at, at some, some terminology. So, so we all have a common understanding of uh, of what I'm, I'm talking about. So in Helm, uh, a package is a chart. So that's, that's what it's called. It bundles together a set of Kubernetes resources you want to install on your cluster. Um, Helm charts can be hosted on a repository. Um, it just takes a standard HTTP server, and um, there's no special other requirements. You just have to host an index at YAML file uh, at, at the root, that's all. Um, but you can also install charts locally from a, from a local directory. Um, when you install a chart, you get a release. So it's basically an instance of a running chart of your running application. Uh, a release um, has a history, and you can install charts multiple times um, on the same cluster. So you would get different releases of that, of that chart. <coughs> All right. So as I said, Helm manages a set of a uh, Helm chart manages a set of Kubernetes resources. You can package any Kubernetes resources into a chart you want and package it up as a Helm chart and, and it would be installed. Um, yeah again it can be hosted in a repository which makes it makes it quite convenient if you want to share charts across teams so so they can install them. Um, releases have a history which is also nice so you can do rollbacks and stuff like this. Um, and probably the killer feature is templating support. So Helm itself is written in Go, so it's natural that it uses the Go templating language. So um, you do not really have to know Go for this, uh, but you kind of have to learn the templating language, obviously. It's, but it's, it's similar to, to other templating languages, so that's, it's not that hard, uh, but it's, it's really quite, quite powerful. And, and in most cases, when you install resor uh, uh, resources um, on your chart, you will have a need for some kind of, of templating. Um, what is nice, you can also access Kubernetes capabilities uh, in, your, in your template. So your chart is aware of, of the cluster it runs on. So you can, you can check uh, what Kubernetes version I am, for example, when you install a chart and, and use that in your, in your installation, which we'll see later. Um, Helm offers uh, a lifecycle management um, via hooks. That means you can um, have certain points during installation and so on where you can hook in and do special things like run additional jobs or something like this. Um, there is dependencies. That is, one chart can have dependencies on other charts. For example, like you have an app that needs a database. Like you, you install a WordPress chart and automatically get a MariaDB as well. So um, 
and this allows you to, to bundle up, like uh, you could install your whole, whole cluster with one chart if you like, you create umbrella charts, for example, and which just have dependencies to other charts, if, if you like. Um, there's PGP support, so you can sign your charts, and there's also uh, support for plugins. And we'll see later in the demo how, how all that works together. Now let's look at the architecture. Um, so there's basically two sides. You have the command line client, and you have a server-side component which is called Tiller. And the command line client talks to Tiller via gRPC, and Tiller itself is the only component that talks to the API server in Kubernetes. So, uh, and also Tiller does the whole rendering of the templates on the server side, so, so it, it, it makes use of, of the information it gets from the API server. <coughs> Um, okay, so before we get more into it, let's just have a look at what the command line uh, offers you. This is just a, a subset of the commands, so you would usually start with helm init, which installs helm on your cluster, uh, tiller on your cluster, prepares your cluster so it, it can, uh, your helm client can talk to it, and, and tiller will be installed, and uh, it prepares your local environment. Um, it uh, also uses, in general, uses your, your kube context, so when kubectl can talk to your cluster, Helm can talk to it as well, and like uh, uh, same, same principles apply, basically. Um, there's install or upgrade. Um, get status list allows you to get information about your install chart, like you can uh, get the rendered manifests, you can get a status which displays you uh, all the parts a chart has installed, similar to kubectl get pods, for example, the chart would list like all resources it installed, services, deployments, pods, and so on, and show you status information on them. Um, and you can also list every release you, you have installed. Um, if you work with repositories, you can use search, which allows you to, to just browse the repository, see what's there, is there a new version of my chart which I could install, and so on. Um, there's also a create command, which is really a good, good to, to, to start with a new chart, which uh, basically has a lot of best practices baked in. So if you want to create a new chart, just do it with helm create, and, and you get an initial setup, which, is, which you can, uh, it basically, it's an, it's an example. It installs Nginx. So, uh, but you can easily reconfigure it to your own to your own needs, but it runs out of the box. And for example, if you like to contribute to the public charts repository, we usually want people to start with that because it, it just adds some best practices, standard labels we want, and, 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 and things like that. Um, yeah. Um, then there is Helm template, which originally was a plugin, which now made it into Helm Core, which allows you to to render charts locally without talking to Tiller. So if you don't have a cluster around and just want to, to render your, your, your charts, it will just um, basically add dummy values if you use capabilities from Kubernetes, which, which you can't resolve because there's no cluster, but it's quite convenient to just render your templates uh, to standard out locally. <coughs> All right, now when you create a new chart, you get a directory structure like this. There's a charts folder, which is only important for dependencies. We can skip that now. You can usually delete it, but it's, it's automatically created with Helm Create. And there's a templates folder. This is the folder where you would just put in all your Kubernetes uh, YAML files. Um, Helm uses standard Kubernetes YAML files, so you don't have to, use, uh, to learn anything new. The only difference is you can parameterize them via Go templating. So um, that means if you have an existing set of, of YAML files, you can just drop them into a templates folder in your chart and, and can just use it like this and then start parameterizing if you need it. Um, every chart has a descriptor file, chart.yaml, which has some metadata. I'll show it on the next slide. Um, <coughs> There's a values.yaml, which contains default values for all the parameters you use. 
So it's it's a good practice to provide a, a default values YAML file so you can install a chart out of the box without specifying anything with default values. <coughs> um, then you can add a notes.txt file, which is also parameterizable, which is displayed when you install a chart. So you can just add useful information to the user, like, um, hi, I'm my app so-and-so, this is just installed, you can access me like, like this, here's the URL, and so on. So when a user installs a chart, he, he knows what to do. Um, and there's this underscore helpers.tpl, I'll show you later, this is used for for, for Go partials, like you can uh, extract common blocks which you would like to reuse, for example, in your, in your templates and put them into that file. This is a chart.yaml file. I just took a sample from the, from the public Redis chart uh, so you see what it looks like. This is a set of metadata. Not all of this is required, um, but most of this is, for example, required if you want to uh, publish a chart on the public repository. If you want to cri contribute there, uh, we require most of these. Like keywords are necessary for search. An icon would be useful if you want to display it in a GUI, uh, like, like cube apps. I'll show you that in a second. Maintainer information and so on. Yeah, and there's the, on, on GitHub, you can find Kubernetes slash chart, which is the public charts repository. There's a whole bunch of of charts, it's, re it's really growing, it's amazing, the community is huge. Um, and there's, um, there's cubeapps.com, which is a basically a web interface on, on top of the charts repository, which allows you to browse uh, and, and, and search for charts, and there's, you can log in, there's a rating system and stuff like this. <coughs> All right, then, um, Let's int look into it. So templating. As I said, you use standard Kubernetes YAML manifest files. And um, you can use Go templating language to parameterize it. It's basically you have, it's always like double curly brace open, double curly brace. Uh, close, and, and you have this dot values object which gives you access to all your values which you can specify in the values.yaml file. It's pretty straightforward. And Helm includes a template library, which uh, is Prick, which offers a lot of additional functions for things like spring manipulation or base64 encoding and, and so on. Um, <coughs> And as I said, you should always provide a values.yaml file with default values so you can install a chart out of the box. On top of that, you have uh, advanced features in a templating language. You can have conditional blocks like if, else. You can uh, specify scopes using the width or, or have ranges for to, to, to create loops. So um, this would also allow you, uh, it's quite convenient it will allow you to, you can conditionally install resources and you can also, using loops, depending on your configuration, in install multiple resources of, of the same kind, kind of. Things like this are, are possible. And on top of the values object, which allows you to access your values, there, there's more built-in objects. You can like get information of the release you just installed, the name or the namespace in which you installed the chart. You can uh, query uh, all the stuff in the chart.yaml file. You can also read in uh, files which are part of your chart. And as I said, access to Kubernetes uh, capabilities, like you can uh, you can. Uh, check what API versions are available on my cluster or what version is my cluster. So you could, for example, let's say you're running on a 1.9 cluster right now and you plan to migrate on a 1.10 cluster. Your development cluster is already 1.10. You could already update your chart and, make it and, and use conditional blocks to query what Kubernetes version I'm on. And when it's on 1.10 already, you could install additional resources that are not available on 1.9, for example. So your chart would work on both versions. Things like that are possible. <coughs> uh, 
I mentioned the underscore helpers.tpl file. This is usually, usually a place where you can put partials or named, named templates, sub-templates. Um, so this allows you to define basically common blocks, like you have a standard set of labels, for example, which you want to apply to all your resources. You can extract that into a partial and, and just use it using the template or the include function. And uh, these are functions that uh, are, are basically provided or come from the, the Sprig template library, uh, like, like um, indent, for example. You can, so, so you can you always get the correct indentation. Um, depending on where you add that in your, where you need these labels in your, in your templates, like be it like on top in the metadata or in a selector, you can reuse that and just pipe it into indent so, so it works on, on all places. <coughs> and Helm comes with a, with a, a set of standard, standard partials for uh, which can be used to, for, for naming your resources. Uh, we have certain naming conventions which you can use, which you don't have to use on your own charts, which are used on the public repository. And when you create a new chart with Helm Create, you just get this, uh, this initial setup, uh, which I, I will show you later, which you can use. <coughs> if you would like to use dependencies, you just have to add a requirements.yaml file and list the dependencies in there. Um, basically, the name of the chart, the version you want to use in the repository you get it from. Could also be a local URL. Um, and you could also alias dependencies, which is not shown here if you want to uh, install the same dependency multiple times with different configuration. That's also possible. And you can also add conditions to your dependencies, so you can conditionally install them. Um, Let's say I, I just mentioned the WordPress chart in the beginning, uh, which is available also on the public charts repository. By default, it would install a MariaDB. Maybe if you want to install this on, on your system, you don't want the additional MariaDB because you already have one, and just you just reconfigure it and point it there so it uses that. So, or let's say another example in my in my current project, um, we deploy every pull request for our app. Our app needs a MongoDB. Of, so obviously, I need a MongoDB for the pull request as well. So the chart has a dependency on a special development MongoDB image, which already has data in it, which is this dependency is just activated for the pull request. So each pull request is deployed in, together with a MongoDB. So we can test it. And if we install it on normal dev staging production systems, of course, we disable this dependencies because the MongoDB is obviously already there. <coughs> Let's have a quick look at hooks. As I said, this offers um, yeah, some kind of lifecycle management. You can hook in at certain points, like pre-post installation, pre-post deletion, upgrade, rollback, and so on. Um, and this allows you to, for example, create jobs at certain points that do maybe some initializ initialization jobs when you install a chart, or some cleanup when you uninstall it. Stuff like this is possible. Um, one thing to note, um, hooks are not managed resources. So, so Helm, uh, when you install a chart with Helm, it keeps track of what it, what it installed and keeps state on the cluster. So, so it, it, when you upgrade and so on, it can, can compare and, and verify uh, things are correct. Um, this is not the case for hooks. So this also means if you uninstall a chart, the hook won't, or the job, for example, the hook created, um, won't be uninstalled. So, but in order to solve this or to rectify this, there's an, another annotation which you could use, so which deletes the hook automatically once it's succeeded, for example. <coughs> All right, um, again, installing chart, there's install and upgrade. Um, you can give your release a name. If you don't, Helm creates a name for you. Um, you will get funny names similar to what Docker does if you deploy, a, a, if you run a Docker container, uh, for example. Uh, usually you, won't, you will want to uh, 
want to give it a name so you know what it does and you can keep track of it. Um, you can also use upgrade minus minus install, which is basically similar than similar to coop control apply. So it just does what it's necessary, install or upgrade. This is what you usually want to use on a CI server, definitely, or mostly used. And here's just an example um, for, for installing the public traffic chart, for example, which is available on the public repository. Um, in this example, uh, a custom values file is provided, which overrides um, Default values, and in addition, in, addi in addition, with minus minus set, you can also specify a, a specific values you want to set on the command line directly. The minus minus debug flag um, prints out the rendered manifests to the console when you install a chart. Um, and there is also a dry run mode, which basically just renders everything on the server side. Let's, as opposed to with the helm template, it's only client side, but you can also use the debug mode, uh, a debug and dry run, and we'll get the uh, stuff rendered on the server side. So Kubernetes vali validates it, and you can be pretty safe that it will install successfully. Um, so you can uh, kind of test, test it up front. Next, helm offers a test feature. So you can uh, test in. So when you install a chart, you can run tests afterwards. So it's basically for, for sanity checks or smoke tests. Um, you could do just need some, some kind of pod you run and does tests against your chart. So you could do um, anything you like. Um, do a curl on your app, do a Selenium test, or um, whatever. It depends on, on your app. Um, this works via test hooks. <coughs> All right, so much for the theory. Um, now, let's um, let's look at some demo stuff. Okay, so uh, let's just start off with Helm Create to show you that. Um, Helm create, and then you give it a name. This will be the name of the chart and also the directory that it's created. Helm create sample, for example. And there it is. Um, let's open it up. And you get this, this structure I just showed you. Um, <coughs> and you can install it right away. I do a helm install sample and give it a name. Uh, yeah, whatever, sample. And it installed my chart. Like on top, I'm just doing a kube control get pods in, in a loop so you see what's coming up. Um, and what you see here is um, status output. This is basically the same you get with helm status. You can do that anytime. Um, it shows you all the resources it deployed and, and prints the nodes. This is what I mentioned. This is what, what comes from the nodes file. In this case, it just shows me some information how I can access this. So um, let me just copy this. And paste it in. And we should be able to access that. And we see Nginx is up and running. So this is the, the, the standard uh, sample, um, which now runs on my, on my cluster. So OK. And I can do helm delete minus minus purge uh, sample. So minus minus purge means I, complete, I delete it completely, like all the history. Uh, if I don't use the minus minus purge flag, I could do a rollback and restore it. So it would keep the history, but I don't need the history now, so I just just remove it. Now, um, let's look at a at another sample. So I created a little demo app 
it's basically based on this initial chart. And it's a very simple um, Express app, which all it does is like print hello world in the host name. There's a, a health endpoint, that's all. So um, what I need, I need a Docker file, obviously. This is a simple Docker file that builds my app. Um, can you read it? Um, and this is my values.yaml file. Um, so let's let's uh, let's go back a little bit again. So um, what I did here is so we can compare it. This is a standard Kubernetes deployment without Helm. And I have the same thing here um, in my Helm chart. So um, what we can see here, so this is just a standard set of uh, of labels, which is created by, by Helm Create. And we can here see here uh, the, the partials from the helpers template I used here. On the left side, this is the normal deployment, which is not parameterized, obviously. But as you can see, it's similar. And you can just param parameterize as much as you need in your own charts. So obviously, there's more stuff in there because it's, it's more a generic template. Um, and here, dot values dot image dot repository this is my my docker image and dot image dot tag and now when i look at the uh, values dot yaml file we can see these are the default values so this is the the image for my app uh, version 1 and i have i have multiple options here for example there is an an, an ingress in my chart, which can be conditionally installed using values.ingress.enabled. So um, depending on where I deploy this, I may need an ingress, I may not need an ingress. So and I can decide when I install what I need. By default, the ingress is disabled, um, but I can enable it. <coughs> so. So. Um, now let's let's try and install this. <coughs> now I use a Helm upgrade <coughs> minus minus install makes it easier. Install this. Give it a name. Code motion. Let's install it. Okay, network. Yes. Bad, obviously. No. Is there? Um, um, I'm in the wrong folder. Sorry. <laughs> uh. Okay. So now it was installed. And again, same thing. I could just um, copy this. And if I do a, let's just do a curl. You should see. So it works. Now, um, <coughs> Now let me just run this in a, no. Let me show you uh, what we can do. Let me enable the ingress, for example. I have an ingress controller running here, so, so this will work. Um, I have a GKE cluster, which I use for this demo. So um, in case you don't know, ingress is just enables you to to, to provide a load balancer for, for, your, for your app, in case you, you're not familiar with that. Um, <coughs> so um, 
here's ingress enabled false by default. And I have a custom values file here, which I can use, um, which specifies my domain, which I created for this, and the secret um, for the TLS certificates, and so on. So So I can just specify this values file. And what you see, I get a different output in my notes file. Because the notes file is parameterized, it sees, oh, I have an ingress. It shows me this URL. Um, <coughs> and let me just curl this URL, and you see it works. So. Now, <coughs> now what we can do is let me let me scale up. So one thing you should you should note <coughs> um, when you use Helm, you sh you should stick with Helm. You should not mess with Kubernetes in between. Use Kubernetes to uh, Kube control to to scale up because Helm Helm keeps state and keeps track of what you do. And uh, if you if you change stuff and upgrade again with Helm, it will fail. So what I do here, I create, uh, increase the replica count in my values.yaml file, my custom one, and just do again a Helm upgrade. And you see two additional pods come up. And we should see, as soon as they are ready, we should see it in the output um, that they are, now you see they are load balanced and basically round robin. Um, <clears throat> okay, so now let's say um, I would like to update my version, uh, create a new version of, of my application. So let's say hello world, let's put like hello Helm. And I would have to docker build again and docker push. I've done that before. So. Um, So I could just put here image tag 2. So I've created a version 2. Let me do an update. <coughs> and you, you see Kubernetes does a rolling update. So additional pods come up, and the, the old ones will, will be terminated. And as soon as the new ones are ready, you will see, see it from the output when, when we curl. Um, the application, we should see it show up. So the first port is there. So now there's still some old ones, some new ones, until everything is rolled over. <coughs> and so and I can do Helm history code motion. And we'll see what I've done so far. So basically, it's revisions are just uh, an index, basically. So we are at revision four now. Um, <coughs> and I could just do a rollback as well here. If I, if I don't like it, let's do Helm rollback to release this code motion. Let's go back to version three. And again, we will see a rolling update returning back to the previous version. And when I do uh, Helm history again, we will get an additional entry for, for the rollback. So I could also roll back to the, the other app again, the, the new version, so if, if I wanted to. <coughs> and um, so we are back to the old version. And just to demonstrate you, you can set values on the command line as well, minus, minus, set. Let's, let's say I want to scale down. Replica count. Let's say I only need two replicas. We will see that one is uh, OK, so um, <laughs> I, um, I made a mistake now. I 
used my original values file, so I, I scaled down and uh, upgraded again to version 2 because I just reused the, the command line. So uh, actually, I didn't, didn't mean to do that, but obviously, makes sense. Yeah. So now we have two replicas of the new version. <coughs> So if, if anyone is interesting, interested in, um, if I do a Helm LS, you'll see I have an Ingress controller running, Nginx Ingress, and I use Cert Manager to get certificates from Let's Encrypt. If anyone is interested in that, it's not part of my talk, but just talk to me afterwards and I can show you. Um, so that's... Um, that's basically all I have. Um, so... Um, Currently, we are at Helm 2.9, so um, planning for Helm 3 has been kicked off already, so uh, it was started at the Helm Summit in, in February. Um, the demo app is on GitHub if you uh, would like to check it out. Um, and <coughs> um, there will be... Uh, if you're interested Helm, for HEM3, uh, quite a few changes. So Tiller will actually go away. Uh, so there will no, be no more server component. Um, the problem with Tiller is uh, when they started that, basically RBAC was not available yet. So, or in really early uh, alpha st uh, stages. So the problem is Tiller needs to have permissions to install stuff on the cluster. So basically, um, if you have a cluster with multiple teams, you, you, uh, and Tiller has permissions for everything, it's, it's not good. So you, you can work around that by installing multiple Tillers into different namespaces and restrict them via RPEC. So that's possible. So, but in the future, um, HEM releases will be installed as, as custom resource definitions, and which can be uh, controlled via RBAC because just the, the client has, has to have the, the user that runs the client has to have the, the necessary RBAC permissions. So this will make it much easier from a security point of view. All right, questions? Need to put this on. I have one finally. Uh, where does Elm is storing his uh, data, actually? On, on disk? I'm sorry? Where Elm is storing his data? The, 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 the configuration, the, the history and all that uh, stuff. Okay, so um, um, it, that's on, on the cluster, obviously. So um, you have the tiller, which is the server-side component, and tiller st stores it as, as config maps or secrets, depending on how you configure it. So it's, it's on the cluster right now. In the future, it will be a CRD. And this is still, so development for HEM3 has started. It, there's no release yet, so this is in the making. Uh, perhaps it's a silly question. No, sorry? Uh, perhaps it's a silly question. <laughs> Can you repeat, please? Uh, how does Helm uh, and Mesosphere sort of compare? Are they in the same, or would you, would you see them in the same, uh, the same use case, or? Helm and Mesosphere. Sorry, the, the audio is like there's dropouts. I didn't really understand what you were saying. How would you compare uh, Helm to Mesosphere uh, for their use cases and uh, the pros and cons, respectively, if there are any, if they are actually comparable at all? Okay, I would, they, I would say they are not comparable. It, it's two different things. So Helm, you can compare Mesos to to Kubernetes, right? So it's it's basically a cluster scheduler. And, and Helm is just the, the package manager. You would, you could probably, uh, and and I mean for for I'm not really experienced in Mesosphere. So you have DCOS and something like DCOS install. Is this what you mean? Which also has some kind of packages. Yes. Yeah. Well, because my the little little the little bit I know about Mesosphere is that you have to somehow. Um, Sort of massage the, uh, the the thing you want to deploy to the to the Mesos cluster, and describe it in a way that it can be deployed. And then mm -hmm. through a command line, you say, "Well, now scale up, scale down." So, in a sense, Mesosphere is a bit like a scheduler with a packager. 
So perhaps Kubernetes mm. plus. Uh, okay. Yeah. So probably that. Uh, in that sense, you can probably compare it. Yes. So, kind of. So, but Mesos itself is really the the the, the cluster scheduler compared to, as comparable with Kubernetes, and and Helm is just a tool on top of that, and 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 Mesosphere or DCS provides similar tooling, I guess. All right, thank you very much.